compelling. Uh, here we go. Yep. Yeah, so here we are. Um, tonight we're going to have just kind of a um, a low key group hangout. We're going to talk about uh, black and white processing uh, from color images, since we all shoot in color except for me, and I shoot in both. Um, but there are some real important steps that we have to consider if we want to uh, process in black and white. And I'm of the opinion, and this is just me, mind you, that if you shoot a color image and you really like the color image, it's always going to be worthy of processing in black and white after you have finished it in color. And that's an important distinction. You've got to finish your post-processing in the color realm first before you jump into the black and white conversion. And there's some strong um, software issues that, that, that force us to go this way. First and foremost, the more um, the colors are perfect, uh, the better the black and white converter will be able to convert uh, to black and white. Uh, having a good set of colors enables you to do some of the special features like uh, the software filters, the red, the green, the yellow, the blue, okay? Um, so we need those colors, and we need those colors processed before we attempt to do that. So that's a very important thing, all right? Mark, is that true of my 850 infrared too that i should be processing before i pull it into six over five no but on on your 850 there's the all the colors are equalized um and what that means is that if you look at the red channel it's going to look like it's monochrome <laughs> and you compare it to the blue channel and they're going to be shifted and different so it, that this is the way it is on a normal color infrared camera uh, 590 665 720 the channels are different they're going to be up and down between the channels are going to be spiky and the histograms are going to be shifted one way or the other between the channels on your 850 and the 830 the 800 and the 775 i know you haven't heard of that but uh, there is a company out there that's that's building those filters those Three color channels, they're not going to be shifted. They're going to be identical. They're going to overlap like this. And you're not going to be able to tell any difference. So there's no color data there. Even though there's three color channels, they're identical. Um, so you don't have to do any color processing uh, from 800 and up. Having said that, have you noticed that when you are shooting at 800 or 850, that it doesn't really look all that perfect as far as monochromatic. It's got, you know, a slight dirtiness to the image out of the camera. Um, sometimes, sometimes it's dead on black and white and I almost don't even need to change it. Yeah. Well, what you do have to do is you've got to bring it into Photoshop and you need to bring it through Silver Effects Pro. Oh yeah, that's what I do. Okay. And, and most of those menu recipes aren't going to make much of a difference. Some of them are as far as contrasts and uh, structure. So, um, but other than that, uh, your workflow is much simplified, okay? Oh, yeah. It's actually, yeah, if I shoot a whole bunch of infrared and add in a whole bunch of infrared, I kind of get angry when I go back to color. because Infrared is such easy processing. I know. I, 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 <laughs> And it's, it, it generates stunning, uh, high-contrast images that are just beautiful. They, they, they take the breath away. So, um, so you, you're way ahead of the game. Uh, but now for the rest of us that um, are shooting color infrared or color, um, then, of course, the, the game is, is afoot, as we say. And you do have to do that color processing first. It is absolutely mandatory. Don't do your color processing and then desaturate to black and white. Don't do that. Go through a black and white filter. Um, On One's got a nice one. Uh, MacFun's got a, a, a nice one. But believe it or not, 
and you guys are probably tired of hearing me say this, the Nick filters, they're just a gift from God. And, and I know I promote them ad nauseum, but um, I have found no better converter uh, for black and white than Silver FX Pro. Uh, it just gives way more control in uh, options that you don't see in the other ones. So, um, but I have one question. Yes, sir. And I use the Nick almost exclusively, but if you have to pull in too much contrast or structure, then you run into halo problems. Are you seeing that with some of the newer software? Um, I am not, but the halo is something that we have to be uh, cognizant of. And I'm just as guilty. Um, I, I will be merely working on my way in processing, and I may not be paying attention, and I will generate an image with halos. And then someone has to point it out to me, and I go, yeah, I know. yeah okay. I'm stupid. I wasn't paying attention. Um, but generally, if you can get that color image without halos, then you're going to be ahead of the game. Okay, because you can, you, it, that's the majority of the work for the black and white uh, is going to be done in the color processing. Uh, so just make sure you don't get the halos in the color processing. It's easy to do, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Um, well, we have a couple of images to work on tonight, and it, and it won't take us long to do it. Um, I did not bring up a infrared image to work on. Um, Linda, would you like me to work on an infrared image too? No, no, I'm actually doing pretty good with my um, infrared black and white, especially after what you just said. I, I'm thinking I should go back to my color and play more with color and black and white lately. Okay. Let's see. The, the, the reason you're so good at this is you're one of the chosen ones. Oh, because I want to what? One of the chosen. Good chosen ones. You're one of the infrared <laughs> disciples now, girl. <laughs> do you know what's yeah, funny? Though? I don't think I could do infrared in any other. Like, I don't think I could go less than 830 or 735 or whatever yeah, one you just said. In, in all I don't think I color. Every infrared version that could be done, I have done. Um, I have even had ultraviolet conversions, okay? Um, I think I'm up to 27 now, 27 conversions. Um, I even did the, the, the super blue, which is in-camera false color. You don't have to post-process it. It does it in the camera. But it requires a funky filter called a super blue, um, which is a, it's a tri, it's a tri band pass band. And it lets a little bit of ultraviolet in, a little bit of color, and a little bit of infrared. And then it mixes and matches and, and squishes it up, and it vomits out on the back LCD of the camera. A finished false color image. Really kind of cool. But it absolutely is terrible for black and white. The images don't like to convert to black and white. Uh, I've done the 590. I've done the 630, I've done the 665, the 720. Now, I have to tell you, I do like 720s, okay? And uh, I have Sherry's 720 here uh, that I'm supposed to be selling for her, but she noticed the other day that I'm dragging my feet on it. <laughs> it's so that maybe Mark will be buying the 720? No. <laughs> I won't, but it's fun to play with. It's a Fuji X-T1, and it is an amazing infrared camera. Um, but then I had that uh, that Fuji X-100 converted to 850 with that new AR uh, filter, the anti-reflective filter. Mm -hmm. And, boy, that's my go-to camera. That's the one I like to carry. But I made a mistake, and I loaned it to James. And I'm not so sure I'm going to get it back. Which conversion is that? 850. Yeah, you're not getting it back because he really wants the same conversion I have. Yeah, and that's that's he's got mine, and, uh, and I'm not sure who, who is worse, him or his wife. Uh, she's turned into an infrared monster. <laughs> so, anyways, let me. All right, I'm going to attempt to sc to share my screen again. Here we go. We'll hide this. You, you guys got to keep talking to me so I know I'm still here, okay? You're still there, Mark. 
All right. So what I've got is I've got a couple of images here. I have uh, this high contrast, moody color image of three dinghies in the water. Um, I have this uh, Eorly Bridge in uh, Georgia around the Atlanta area. And then I have Richard's image. Thank you, Richard, for getting those to me. Not a problem. Um, uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to do Richard's image, okay? And I'm going to walk you through this, um, my personal recipe, okay? Um, we're not going to talk about things like uh, noise reduction because you all are, you've all got that mastered. Let me turn off the crop. Um, but what I am going to do is I'm going to go through here and make a few color changes because what was the number one rule I said? Get the color right first. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me make this full screen. I'm just going to run by Visa and I'm going to attack some of these rust areas. Okay, on these big motors, and uh, I'm going to increase the saturation a bit of the rust area. I'm going to increase the structure there, and that's doing it between the structure and the saturation. Um, I may add a little warmth, just a bit of warmth there. And then I'm going to copy that over here to this one. Uh, Maybe one or two of these other rusty things. I don't know, Richard, what do you think? How about the, the, the little walkway here? That's kind of rusty, isn't it? Yes. Ah, excellent. Okay. Um, down here. Am I missing anything? I'm going kind of fast, you guys. So it's your job to jump in. How about back here on this tin shingles? Maybe on those crankshafts or whatever those are on the far right and left. You mean these? I don't no. know. Right in the middle on the on the right. Honestly, I, I'm not sure what you're talking about. So go all the way to the right edge. And that's it. This? Yeah. Well, it doesn't really appear to be rust as so much it is dirt. Let's put it on there. No, that's not really doing anything. Um, all right, so we've done some rust. Let's, let's bring up the green a little bit, okay? Oh, yeah, the structure did that nicely, don't you think? I had a little... 1931, too. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine, too because I was going to do that next. Maybe brighten it up a little. Oh, yeah. That's what we need. Let's erase that one. And we're just going to copy this one around. That. Oh, yeah. That's cool. You know, Richard, I, I really like these images from Cuba. Uh, these, Thank you. Oh, I so wish I was there. I'm going to do the face of this little walkway here and I'm going to bring up the green okay yeah that looks pretty dang good um, let's see if we can do anything in this black here by bringing up the structure oh look at the detail that brought out is that showing up on the video yes yes oh, just way cool the corners um, have, have gotten a little darker and a little redder. Yeah, um, and now let's do that 1931. Okay, and I'm going to increase the saturation. I'm going to make them brighter. They're darker. Oh, darker. Not a lot darker, though, huh? There you go. That's better. Yeah, that's cool. Um, anything else I think is good enough. All right. 
So we're going to, to run this, let it, let it do its magic and create its adjustment layer over here in our layers palette. There we go. Um, and I'm going to do one more thing. Um, I'm going to bring up a color effects. And we may not do anything with this, but I just want to see real quick what contrast color range does as I shift the color slider. I mean, already, the, okay. look what it did. But we're going to move this color slider, and I'm looking at the rust. Why are you picking that to focus on? Well, because that's where we're going to get a lot of information in the black and white. Mm -hmm. Why is that? It, for some reason, uh, rust works very, very well in black and white and infrared. I don't know. You guys think that that's too much? I think it's too much, but it would be interesting to take them both into uh, silver effects and see the difference. Well, let's try another one. Let's go down to tonal contrast. It's not quite as in your face. Um, let's look at the shadows. We'll take the midtones down a little. Let's look at the highlights. There's really no highlights. Let's look at before and after. See, that's a little bit more subdued. And what I've really done is I've brought out the texture more in here and more in the back. I'm going to go with that just for argument's sake. Um, you guys got to keep in mind that this is all in the eye of the beholder. And tonight I'm feeling a little on the gaudy side. Okay. All right. So there we go. I am done with this. Now, at this point, Richard, um, I would uh, take the layers and flatten them because I'm going to send this back to you when we're done, okay? Great. And I would do a file, save as, and I would say color, color, and we're going to shift this back over to TIFF, okay? And I'll upload this for you to the group drive. Thank you. All right. Um, I, might, I might take the reds on the rails a little bit down, the vertical. Yeah. Yeah, and like I said, it's just in the eye of the beholder. I just wanted to get some of the garish colors going so that when I... Oh, no, I, I, like, I like the main elements. Great. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I'm feeling very garish tonight. So I'm going to start my, my Silver Effects Pro. And the first thing that it's going to do is it's going to come up in the neutral mode. Okay. And what this is, is basically just a desaturation. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave everything as it stands, and I'm going to go down to the filters down here. And we're going to play with these filters. There's the red. There's nothing. The red actually decreases contrast in this image. Um, the orange is going to do less. The yellow should do even less. Now the green. Now the green actually increased contrast on the machines. See that? Blue. Blue could be scary. Hmm. But that did kind of an interesting thing, didn't it? Mm-hmm. All right, and I just want to see now. You, if you don't have colors and well processed colors, these aren't going to work. Mm. Okay. Now let's go down and look at some of these recipes. I want to look at number five, which is kind of a high structure, and then a smooth version of that. And then I'm going to turn it on and off here. And the biggest change I see there are in these indicator dials, okay? I really like those dials. It's really, I, 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 I guess I shouldn't say third world, but it is. Oh, it is. 
but it's antique. Okay, and then I'm going to go up here in the full dynamic range, harsh, and I'm going to look at that. That brightens everything up, so let's add the blue to that. Ugh, we were better off before. And I'm going to go down a little bit further and look at the, the – you could look at the full spectrums. That tends to smooth it out a little. Okay. Uh, the fine art process is one that I really like. Yeah, me too. Um, I find that I get really good results with that, especially if I bundle it with a filter. I like wet rocks. Yeah, I do too. Wet rocks, though, can be real overkill. Yeah. Let's, let's go down and look at it. Sometimes wet rocks works. When it works, it works really well. And when it doesn't work, it, it fails miserably. Um, in this case, it works pretty good. Okay. Yeah, I think maybe wet rocks with this green filter. The green is highlighting uh, the green areas here on uh, the motors. You notice that? It's brightening them up, and it gives it a real three-dimensional effect that pulls you in as compared to no green and green. See that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Makes the 1931 stand out. Oh, yeah, it does. I, and, and I like this. <clears throat> now I'm going to go in and I'm going to play with the structure a little bit. Now I could add control points to this should I desire. And I'm going to look at my contrasts. Yeah, where well, we need that contrast. Because these recipes are just starting points, okay? And when I have it the way I like it, which is pretty much right here, okay? I'm going to go in and I'm going to say okay, and I'm going to uh, let it run. And then I'm going to go in and make one more editing change here in Photoshop after this completes. Um, I'm going to go up here under Edit, and I'm going to Transform, and I'm going to skew it. And I'm going to look and see if I can do something about this beam right here. But i got to be careful because I don't want the motors to be look like they're tilting up. Can you put anchor points on the motors, or is that just with the puppet warp? No, yeah, that, yeah, that's the, you cannot do that with uh, uh, the skew. Uh, there is a way to do it in one of the other ones, but I'm not. Okay, it's, with, it's a puppet warp. Yeah. Um, but it looks good. Yeah, I'm going to go with this. All right. Yeah, that works for me. I'm going to accept that. Just to make this straight across the top. All right. And already, and I go back and forth. The reason I'm doing this is I'm watching specific colors as I go back and forth. Um, I'm looking at this area around 1931, I'm looking at 1931, and I'm looking at the dial faces. I'm looking to see if there's anything else that I want to do. And I'm really not seeing it. Um, this is actually quite powerful. Um, let's, let's do one other thing. Let's go back into color effects again. Um, I want to look at making this darker and angrier, and I'm I'm going to um, I'm going to go down to the bottom, and I'm going to look at lens vignette to start. Yeah. Mm, yep. 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 See that? Mm -hmm. uh, let's change it from a circle to a rectangle. Which one is that? Did you say lens vignette? Lens okay. vignette. See, it, it makes it look – If I mean, if I turn it off, see here – I mean, that's a nice black and white image. But if I do a vignette, um, I can make it much moodier and much more powerful. I can go from here to here. Let's 
what do you guys think of, of this for as a, a way to increase the moodiness of the image? Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I really like it. Richard? Oh, I, I like it. My only question is, is it a little bit too much? What happens if we back off just a little bit? Well. No, you're right. If anything, I, I, I think I'd go more. Almost you, looks like a time machine. Yeah, it, you, you can experiment between the circle and the rectangle, but I think for this image, the rectangle is much better. Uh-huh. And then overall image brightness. I mean, it's 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 almost scary looking. You're right. It, it does kind of look like a time machine. Um, now I am done. So let's. I mean, this is a great black and white shot, just like this. But this adds mood and darkness. Um, it makes the machine pop out more. Yes. Yeah. It's, Ansel Adams said, um, no image was done in his dark room till he vignetted it. Um, because it draws the viewer's eyes in towards the subject. But I think it does more than that. I think that having this dark area adds a, a measure of moodiness that just was missing. Like I said, this is a great documentary image just like this. Okay? I mean, I would be proud to see this in any magazine. Um, but this is just darker and moodier. And if you go on, uh, do you guys have a 500 picks account? I do. For those no. of you who are going mm and no, go get one. All right? And start posting these images. Create yourself a set of galleries, um, black and white, landscapes, color, you know, nature, that kind of thing. And post these things. <clears throat> and what this is is an online an, an, an online critique. And people could uh, critique you via um, giving you a, um, a liking the image, or favoring the image, or commenting on the image. And the more of these you get, the higher your score goes. The higher your score goes, the higher your image goes to the top. And then it's divided in, into fresh, upcoming, um, and popular. And in, I guarantee you, Richard, this image would go um, from fresh to popular in about an hour. Now, if, whether it makes it to the heights, to the top end of the popular is, is, is I, I, I don't know. That's, that's a little bit hard to do. But this, I would consider a completed image at this point. Mm -hmm. um, just that simple. So let's, um, I'll, I'll save, I'll save, actually, you know what we'll do? I'll select this image. Well, why not just save all the layers? And I'm, then I, well, I'm going to merge the silver down with the background, and I'm going to leave. Uh, okay. <laughs> all right. Hey, Richard. I can undo it. Thank you. I I just I'd like to play. I'd like to have that. All right. Uh, so we'll see. So, Liz, do I have you to thank for this? Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. This was awesome. Black and white layers. I'll take it I'm down quickly. So. What's that? Oh, I, I was going to tell Mark I'm going to take. I'll download it quickly so that he'll have the space because this will eat up a lot of space. I have unlimited space. All right. Well, thank you very much. All right. This is, thank you, Liz. Okay. But wow. This is the type of things you do. Um, like I said, a wonderful black and white image, just like we're looking at it right now. It would work well in any magazine. It would look very nice on anybody's wall. It's bright, it's mechanical, it's ancient, it's aging, it's rotting, it's really cool. But we add this one thing to it, 
And now all of a sudden we add Moody to it. Okay, just by adding the vignette. Now, if you don't want the mood and you want to go ethereal, instead of a black vignette, go with a light vignette and lighten the edges. Okay? You know what I'm talking about here? I know, I know exactly what you're talking about, but dark, dark draws you in. Yeah, and, and light makes it more ethereal. Right. Okay. All right, so that's done. Any questions on this before I close it? No. Black and white layers, yeah, we already saved it. Richard, have you already edited it, or what's the story behind the photo? What's that? Oh, what's oh the I had story behind the photo? As far, oh, well, this was an abandoned copper mine in Cuba. And we kind of had to crawl in a place that they broke into the side of the building to take the pictures. And everything had been kind of cleaned out, except for the big machines. And it was dark. And I basically had to set up a tripod. Oh, no. To, I do long exposures, and I actually those were HDR, but I didn't. I just used a 32-bit combined image. I didn't, and I didn't tone map them. And when and you edited, use, did you do color? Did you do black and white, or what? I did color, which is what you saw initially, and then Mark made my color better by bringing out the rust. Oh, okay. And and so yes, yeah, that was before Mark. And I like what Mark did. That's why you want to keep the color one, too, because you want to save the color one and the black and white one. Right. That's why I wanted all those layers. I actually don't know where I saved those color ones at. Let's go look. It was, it was a tiff. Yeah, definitely saved them. There they are. Uh, let's do a save as. Oh, I, I put them in working. Hold on. Let's let's put them back in your directory. Black and white. And we did save it as a TIFF, so we'll save. Okay. See, I wasn't paying attention, was I? You'd find it. You did. Now, I this one doesn't have this fixed across the top, okay? Right. <clears throat> Okay, so well, there, now they're in the right directory. Um, okay, um, you guys, let's pick another one to do. Um, you, you guys about the bridge? Choose. You guys can choose. The bridge. The bridge. Oh, man, that's just so disappointing. I like that choice because it's a little flatter to begin with, so I'm, I'm curious to see how you – how you do with with an image that's flatter to start. All right. Yeah, that's why I decided on that one. All right. <laughs> well, I'm just going to go in. I'm going to run via Visa. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a, a set of stairs, if you will, a set of steps that draw the viewers in by changing color contrast going from left to right, lighter and darker. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select an area here. I'm going to lower the brightness just a bit. Uh, down here the same. Uh, here's a, a set of lighter leaves. I'm going to bring that out a, a bit. Uh, carry that over there, and there's some down here. 
Now I'm going to grab this dark control point. I'm going to bring it over here and darken it and grab the lighter control point here because what I'm doing is I'm creating a set of dark light, dark light steps coming across the image. Okay. I want that set of stair steps, if you will, that draw the user. Oh, no, that's too much there. There we go. Draw the user into the image. So see what I've got here? I've got dark, light, dark, lighter, dark, lighter, 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 all the way across. I'm getting darker, darker, and darker. And it's, it's going to be those set of stair steps with the changing color contrast that I'm going to use in that black and white image uh, to give me more detail and, and more of a, um, uh, a set of visual aids to draw the user's eye into the image. Plus, it helps in the color image, too. Um, yeah, that's an improvement. The The bridge itself looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. The stones look good. I'm getting lots of detail in the road bed. Um, I could care less about the grass, but there's good detail down here. Uh, Jimmy, James actually went down here and went wading in this river. Uh, this is on our Atlanta workshop. He wanted to get a shot of this bridge from the side, but he couldn't get out deep enough because the river was deeper than he thought. Now I'm going to bring up silver again. As you can tell, that image was mostly edited. All right. Now, I will tell you that with scenes with lots of green leaves and green grass, it's the green filter. See that? That's going to give you most of the changes that you want. And you see how it carries that dark, light, dark, mm -hmm. lighter, dark. See how it carries that? If I turn that filter off, it still has it, but not nearly as good. Uh, let's go down here and let's look at uh, number five, the harsh, and then turn on the green filter. Well, that really pops out, doesn't it? Try the red filter. Well, that, uh, that works too. That may be a little much. Maybe the yellow filter is a little bit better. Now let's turn that on and off. Then going from neutral. All right, and let's go down and look at a smoother version of that, which I'm not too happy with. And you've got to try this recipe because every image is going to behave differently. Full dynamic range, harsh and smooth, full spectrum, and full spectrum light. And that actually works pretty good. Turn on the green. Wow, that's kind of nice. And shift it to red. And yeah, we gotta go down and try wet rocks, don't we? Fine art looks good. Fine art actually looks better. It's not so bright up here. Blue just darkens those greens up. You see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, green works well. I think yellow is a little bit better. Orange, red. Which filter do you guys like? I like the wet rocks. I thought that was pretty good. Well, no, I'm talking about the color filters. Oh, yellow. Yeah, I kind of. No, like green, it. yellow. Uh, was it yellow? No, I the, think it was yellow. Yeah, I like the yellow better myself. But well, we will go look yeah. at wet rocks. Yeah, that looks great. Wet rocks. Oh no! Too dark. Too dark on that one. Yeah, too dark. 
Yeah, well, we can fix that, you know. Yeah, let's go back to that. Fine art yellow. It's actually not too bad, is it? Bring the brightness down just a, a touch because I don't want this blown out up here. See that? Um, contrasts. And um, Linda, yep. you'll find that in your images right out of your camera, you're going to want to add contrast. To the infrared ones? Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, I usually do that in um, uh, Adobe Raw. Yeah. Doesn't matter where you do it. I add contrast all, to all photos in Adobe Raw, actually. All right. So there's the image. Let's look at that. Do you see how it carried that, that set of, of visual steps across the image? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's let's run one more filter. Color effects. And uh, we're going to go down to um, Lynn's vignette again. We're going to see what that does. I'm going to play with the circle versus um, a square. And then I'm going to play with the amount again. This one doesn't need quite as much. And if you'll notice, as I move the slider, you can see the change, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, when I let go of that slider, all of a sudden, can you, can you pick out where it's vignetted? Mm -hmm. it's really On the lower left, you can see, but it's hard to see it anywhere else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but isn't that the sign of a good vignette? Yes, that is the sign of a good vignette. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to go with that. So let's create a layer, and then we'll go back and forth. All right. So there it is before the vignette. There it is after. And it's just, this one is very minor, okay? Not nearly as much as we did in in, in the uh, the the factory of Richards, but it still tends to focus our attention right here. All right. Um, and th that's how I would go with this one. Cool. All right. And on this one, I never flatten the layers. So if we go all the way back to the color image, these are all my editing steps that I did in the color image. All right. Um, but um, like I said, there's a, a, a well done black and white image is, is always a thing of beauty. Not on the computer screen rather printed and hanging on the wall. Um, and your choice of paper that you print on is going to make a very big difference too. Um, something that is high texture, uh, something with a fine tooth, like a Hannah Mule 
uh, William Turner paper that has a real tooth, almost a velvet feel to it. Um, uh, this would look good on a metallic paper as well, all right? Um, any questions on this one? Mm -mm. No. All right. So let's... Actually, let's look at these three. All right. Um, this was the original. This was our color edits. Um, the color edits were just designed to bring out the rust, mm -hmm. uh, to bring out the detail and the dials, and to bring the green up. Okay. Um, and then the black and white. And I think both the color and the black and white are, are worthy images. Um, the color is, is very nice. It's very bright. But the black and white, um, I think it's, it's more of a pure image. It takes away the distractions of the colors. Okay. And it lets you become one with the subject uh, uh, on a more personal level. That's pretty deep, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Um, so are there any other questions that I can answer before I bail out of here? Mark, I have a question in general. Okay. So ever since I got my infrared camera and I've been editing my infrared black and white, I really like them, but then when I find one of my color ones and I try to change it to black and white, to me it just, I can never make it bright enough. It's always too gray. Is that just because I'm so addicted to my infrared now and that's just the way color is and you can never make it that? Or am I not pushing it far enough? Uh, it, well, number one, the infrared's always going to be more dramatic. Perfect. Okay. But a good color image, um, you can make it dramatic too. But again, the trick is increasing the contrasts, adding the vignette, and paying careful attention to various um, uh, subject areas to bring up detail and structure. Uh, for us in this, it's the surface of these big motors and pulleys, okay, and the dials. These dials are just everything. These, these turn into eyeballs that are looking out at you. Mm -hmm. And if these were just gray or black they would just be blah okay okay the, <laughs> the railings become secondary almost like teeth looking at you this is some great big 1900s monster getting ready to swallow you um but it, it really is dramatic um in the vignette like i said the vignette is is very important sometimes a small vignette is enough sometimes you need a bit more Okay, and that's especially true on long exposures. Let me. Why is that especially true on long exposures? Well, I'm going to give you some examples of that. All right, let's go archival. Let's see what I got in here. All right, here's an example. Uh, this is the Body Island Lighthouse in the Outer Banks, okay? And as you can see, it was a nice bright day, right? Um, the exposure on this one was long, but the effect is almost as a long exposure. You can sense motion in, in the clouds. So when I did the black and white, I darkened that sky at, at using a gradient uh, filter in color in Color Effects Pro, and started it dark at the top, and and I blended it down. Um, and I did that to increase the moodiness of that. Now let me see if I can find another one here for you. I don't know if I have any of those in this directory. 
This is another image where I used a, a gradient uh, filter uh, to further darken the sky up at the top and let it lighten as it came down into the, the orange area. But you notice the vignettes? It's subtle. Yeah, it's very subtle, but it makes a difference. Now, here's where I did a negative vignette. All right. Mm -hmm. I went just the opposite. I brightened it to, to give it a more ethereal feel. Mark, that's the first white vignette I think I've ever liked. Uh huh. Yeah, you, you can't use them often. Oh, here's one. This was by no means this moody. Um, now the sun was not up. The sun is just behind the mountains here. Uh, this is an image that Richard said, oh, look at the halo in here. Okay. Uh, but actually the sun is right here. And it created a halo. But I darkened it up here greatly. Um, and I was never sure if I was going to like that or not. That's a lot of mood. Yeah, it does add mood. Now, did that pier survive? That pier survived. I was out there this morning. Uh, I know I've got some real... Uh, here's one. Uh, this is the Ravenel Bridge in Charleston. Um, this was not real long, 16 seconds. Um, but I wanted it to be really dark and moody. And there was clouds coming in, and the lights on the, the, uh, the, the towers of the bridge were shining up and hitting me underneath the cloud. So I, I, I created a vignette around here to darken it even more than normal. That one looks cool. I like that one. Pardon? That one looks really cool. I like it. Um, here's another example of where I did this. This is the Golden Gate in San Francisco. Um, God, this is another 16-second one. And there are all kinds of clouds up here. But I was more interested in seeing what happened with these lights that are pointing up into the sides. And there were lights on the backside, too, and, and the towers created this shadow. See the shadow going up? Mm-hmm. Um, and this is one of my favorites that I've done in a long time, this, this particular bridge shot. But I really vignetted the corners, the upper corners here. And I shifted the vignette up towards the top so I wouldn't do it at the bottom too much. Um, because I wanted to create more mood. Uh, the same thing with waterfalls. Now, you see the intensity of these rocks. The entire scene was this brightness. But I vignetted it uh, deeply because I wanted a, a real dark, moody image. Okay, and here's another example of where I did that. Um, I wanted our eyes to, to look fully at that waterfall. That's all I was interested in. Do you ever paint in your vignettes so that it doesn't look as much like a vignette, but more looks more like highlighting or no. I haven't had to do that yet, um, but I, I could see a uh, a case for it from time to time. Um, this was ninety seconds here, and the clouds were moving at ultra high speed. Uh, and they were moving from behind me going into the scene. 
and this was right wow. at sunset. Uh, and we had this bright burning fire in the sky here with these blue clouds moving in. But you can see my vignette. See it here? Mm -hmm. um, but it's so subtle and it's so graduated that it looks natural. All right. And it makes for a very powerful image. Not that I could ever do anything with that image. Uh, there's the black and white version of that other one that you said you liked. This is the black and white one instead yeah. of. Okay. We get some wild sunsets here. And yes, even black and white sunsets can be stunning. I mean, this almost looks like an alien invasion, doesn't it? Uh, these from a Mattis clouds hanging down. And they created shadows. The sun's setting over here, so the shadows are, are, are starting coming towards me as these clouds hanging down created them. And I thought, that's, that's an image for black and white. Okay. Now that you've seen this black and white, now can you see the, the white vignette here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, it all works. Okay, even this is vignetted, but I did it on the bottom. I did not do it on the top. Okay. How did you? How do you do it unevenly like that? Um, there's a filter in there. It's called a graduated. Okay. That you can you can shift up, down, and you can rotate. So I did one here in this corner. Right rotated at this angle so it's coming in like this and then one here rotated at this angle coming in like this mm -hmm. all right um there's just all kinds of things that we can do uh, and you just have to experiment with them to see what it is there's that image that i showed you before that i converted to black and white and vignetted mm -hmm. all right that waterfall mm -hmm. And it's pretty in the color mode. And yes, I walked out there and placed every single leaf. <laughs> no, actually, it was there. Um, but all of these, this would be stunning in black and white, and I don't know why I didn't do it. Uh, sometimes, I, you know, I'll, I'll get tired, but... You know, if, if, if an image is worth doing in color, like the Golden Gate Bridge, here's the color version. Um, it is worth doing in black and white. Yeah, I think I like the Golden Gate better in black and white. Yeah. Okay. Because it's different. So am I still here? Yeah. You're here. Yeah. Hey, Google worked. Wrong. Wow. Yeah, and I'll tell you, Mark, the uh, the picture quality when you're sharing your screen when you're making the adjustments. Yeah, you could I I could see them better than I've ever seen them before. Like a lot of times, they would just lag, or there would be you know some uh, compression issues or something in the in the image quality. But it was it was really good tonight. Well, I've got. Um, my bandwidth set all the way up to the highest here, and I'm not having any problems. And all along, I've always had to set it down towards the bottom, which of course takes away from picture quality. Yeah. Um, okay. But there you have it, Linda. This was your request. No, it wasn't my request. It was mine. Oh my goodness, Liz! This was your request, and we answered yeah. your questions. <laughs> yeah, it makes me feel good. I feel like I'm in the right spot. Now, who's that behind you watching TV? What's that? Who's that behind you watching TV? My boyfriend. Hi, boyfriend. Do you have a name? Steve. Steve. Howdy. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, howdy from Polly's Island, South Carolina, uh, <laughs> Texas. Dallas. Dallas, Texas. Uh, the great Northeast Canadian <laughs> one wild area. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to remember where you're from, Michael. It's very forgettable, this place. 
It's called New Jersey. You may not have ever heard of it. Oh, you were <laughs> up there. Yeah, okay. Yep. If you've ever been here, you'd want to forget it pretty quick. Well, no, Sherry's there. She likes it. I've never heard her say I that. I thought she was in the city. <laughs> oh, Sherry, I'm sorry. Rhonda's in the city. Yeah, Rhonda's in Pennsylvania. 